I'm Eloise and I'm part of the maths team here at the University of Wolverhampton and this video will be going over trigonometry. So in trigonometry uh, there's sine, cos and tan, graphs and the sine and cosine rules. So when we have a triangle and we want to figure out an angle or a side we can use Sokotoa. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse cos is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and tan is the opposite over the adjacent. So SOH sine opposite hypotenuse, CAH cos adjacent hypotenuse and TOA tan opposite and adjacent. When we're looking at the pictures of the triangles, the long slanted side is the hypotenuse. And then the opposite and the adjacent depend on where the angle is. So if you have a look in the pictures, the side that's directly opposite the angle is what we label as the opposite. And the other side, which is touching the angle, is the adjacent. So let's put it into use. For example, if we wanted to find the height of the isosceles triangle, we could use Sokotoa. First, we would need to highlight where the height is. So it would be this line here, and you can see that that splits it into two different right angle triangles. So we have an angle of 55 degrees. And x, the height, which we want to find, is opposite the angle. And we have the five meters at the bottom, which is adjacent to the angle. So we have the angle of 55, the opposite and the adjacent, so we have O and A, which means we need tan, TOA. So we do tan of 55 equals X over five. Now we need to use our algebra skills to rearrange this a little bit. So if we want X on, our, on its own, you can multiply three by five. So five multiplied by tan of 55 is X. And when you put that into your calculator, you get 7.14. But here you can see that the angle is given in degrees, so you need to make sure your calculator is set to degrees. There are some instances in your maths courses where you might be using radians, and it's very easy to forget to check the settings of your calculator before doing this, but it will give you a wrong answer, so just make sure you double check. Okay, well, how about this one? So we're given the opposite and the hypotenuse, O and H, so we're going to use sine. So we know sine of X is 5 over 7, opposite over hypotenuse. But to undo and to get the X, we need to use the inverse. So if you look at your calculator, there should be a button for sine to the power of minus 1. That's the button that you need to use to find out the angle. So let's have a look at the graphs. This is a sine graph, and there's a couple of different things you need to look at. So this one goes through the point zero, zero, and it rises up and it gets to one at 90 degrees, and then it comes back down to zero at 180 degrees. It goes all the way down to minus one at 270 degrees, and then it comes back up to zero at 360 degrees. And then also look at how it looks like with the negative angle, so minus 90, minus 180. Look at where the graph starts to repeat itself. These are really important things to know about the graphs. This is the cos graph, and it looks very, very similar to the sine graph, but there are some differences. Whereas the sine graph went through 0, 0, a cos graph starts off with at 0 degrees, it's at 1, and then it comes down to zero at 90 degrees, down to minus one at 180, up to zero at 270, and back up to one at 360. Now a graph that looks completely different to sine and cos is the tan graph. Hopefully you can see here that at minus 19 at 90, and then at 270, there are things called asymptotes. So they're lines, that are invisible, they're not drawn on here, but if you look at the line that the tan 
is making, it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to that line, but it never actually touches the line. And that's called an asymptote. So how do we use graphs? Well, we can use graphs for solving if we didn't want to use Sokotoa. So if we had sine of x is 0 0.5, and we wanted to figure out what x was for all angles between 0 and 360 degrees, how would we do that? Well, let's have a look at this graph. Here's the line for 0 0.5. And if we draw down, we can see that at 30 degrees and 150 degrees, the sine of x graph is at the point of 0 0.5. So that's our answer. So the sine and cosine rule. We use the sine rule when we're given two angles and we're given a side. And the sine rule is a over sine a equals b over sine b equals c over sine c. And hopefully when you look at this triangle, you can see that the big angle c is opposite the side labelled c. The big angle a is opposite the side labelled a. And the big angle b is opposite the side labelled b. So it doesn't matter what you want to label them, you can use x, y, z, whatever letters are given to you in the example, just make sure that your big letter for your angle is opposite the smaller letter for the side. So if we were given this, for example, we're given 42 degrees for our angle B, 66 degrees for our angle C, and we're given a side of A for 12 centimetres, and we wanted to figure out what the side length of B is. Okay, we want to figure out the length AC. So first, let's figure out what this last angle is. We know that all angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if we take away the 42 and the 66 from 180, the angle A is 72 degrees. And then we have all three angles and one of the sides. So hopefully we should be able to use the formula that we saw earlier to calculate the side length. So this is the formula and let's put in all of the information that we have. We have the side length of little a and we have the angle. We don't have the side length of b but we do want to find that out and we have the angle. Now we do have the angle for c but we don't know the side length for c and we're not trying to work it out. So in this instance that's completely unimportant and you can forget about it. So. What we do have that's important is 12 over sine of 72 equals b over sine of 42. So again, we use our algebra skills to rearrange this. We want b, so we want to isolate b. If b is being divided by sine 42, we can undo that by multiplying by sine 42. And what you do to one side, you must do to another. So we end up with sine of 42 multiplied by 12 over sine of 72 equals our b. And when we plug that all into our calculator, we get 8.4 centimetres. So the cosine rule, it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And again, the triangle is set up in the exact same way that the sine triangle is. The only difference between the two rules, other than the formula for them, is when we use them. So the cosine rule is when we have two sides and the angle between them. Take this example. If we wanted to find the length of x and y, now we have the two sides, the x and the y, and we have the angle, the z. So we can use our formula, but we need to change it up a little bit because as we can see from here, we're not given a's, b's and c's, we're given x, y's and z's, and that's okay because all the letters are, are a placeholder, meaning this side or this angle that we don't know yet. Okay, so in this instance, we want to find out what our Z is going to be, because that's our side X, Y. So we make that the subject. Our A is now Z. And our B and our C are our X and our Y. So now we've got the formula looking like the question is. Let's start plugging stuff in. So we know what our y is, it's 42. We know our x is, it's 36. 
and we know where our angle is, it's 35. So when we pop that all into the formula, we get out 24.1. And again, don't forget those units of millimetres. So that's all you should need to know about trigonometry. If you need any more maths help, please check out the other videos that we're doing. Thank you.